BVH animations in Blender for uh, avatars. Part two, moving and copying frames. I'm going to assume you saw my last video on editing the internal animations. You downloaded the sample BVH files from Linden Labs, copied them to your hard drive, learned to load them into Blender, and saved them back out. I forgot to tell you yesterday that you should not close this Blender file yet, or maybe even save it to a blend file. Because today I'm going to pick up where I left off, and if you don't, didn't save this, then you're going to have to go back and load the BVH file and rotate it and, uh, and apply the rotations and get it into this state again. I went and set the, the end frame number. And it'll be good for your soul to practice it a second time, so no biggie if you, uh, if you didn't save this. Here we have that running animation that came from the Lindens, and we want to fix it. And the first problem that it has is that it doesn't have a T-pose at the beginning. All animations are supposed to have a T-pose. So we have to make room for a T-pose. It's supposed to be in frame one. So in the timeline with the box select tool, you can grab all of the frames in your animation. And then you can drag them right. I'm going to drag them right just one which frees up frame number zero. When you're editing an animation, you're going to have to make sure the bones are all always selected, select all or A. And we're still in pose mode left over from yesterday. So if you're starting over, you want to make sure you're in pose mode, you have all the bones selected, then you'll be able to see the timeline. This blue thing is the current frame that you're editing. And I can go to frame number one now, which doesn't have anything in it. So what Blender does is it just, whatever pose was there, leaves it where the way it was posed. We want to create a T-pose. That turns out to be easy. We can go to Pose, Clear Transform, and we have all the bones selected. So we hit Clear uh, Rotations. We clear the rotations in all the bones. And now the stick figure is in the T-pose. The next step is to right-click on the, the empty 3D viewport and select Insert Keyframe. It will ask us, uh, what do you want to remember in the keyframe? For beginners, you need to select only rotations. You're not going to be translating or scaling these bones. Inserting a keyframe, put a little orange dot there, and now... We have uh, the T-pose, as we're supposed to have. We have the animation running. It runs all the way up to frame 15. But if you remember yesterday, we had to set our end frame to 14. Well, you have to bump it to 15 now so that uh, it includes all uh, of the frames that you have. Now, another problem that this animation has that Linden Labs requires that all animations, uh, when they have a loop, that the first and the last frame of the loop be, be the same. Now you notice that on the last frame, his foot is up, but on the first frame, his foot has hit the ground. And the fact that these two frames are not identical is why there's a sudden jerk in that animation. So what we're gonna do is, I'm clicking on the timeline to deselect all of the frames. I'm going to left click on frame number two, I'm going to drag the blue cursor over to frame number 16. And then all I have to do with my cursor in the timeline is hit Control C for copy, Control V for paste. And I have copied frame 2 to frame 16. And now, if I remember to set my last frame to 16, my last frame has the foot on the ground and zip. The first frame has the foot on the ground. So now we have uh, fixed the second bug in this animation that the first and the last frame of a loop have to be the same. But we have this minor problem that if we hit play, there's, a, <laughs> there's now a jerk where that first frame plays twice and the T-pose appears. Well, and this is really ugly. Well, you can go to the start frame and say, switch that from starting at one to starting at three and now you get to see what the animation will look like if uh, you play it in second life or open sim so now it looks pretty good 
But something very important is you do this to see what your animation looks like, but you have to remember to set that start frame back to frame number one before you save it. We save it just like yesterday. Export. BVH. I'm going to call this one New Run. I'm going to make sure it has uh, Euler XYZ. It has root translation only. Then I'm allowed to save it. Now, if you recall, before you can load a BVH file in World, if you just saved it in Blender, you need to open it in a text editor. So there's new run.bvh, and you have to replace every occurrence of XYZ rotation with ZXY rotation. Replace all, there's 21 of those, that is correct. And then you can go in world and uh, load this, uh, this animation. Here I am in world again, and I'm going to load that animation, upload animation, new run. Isn't it? So now that we have a proper animation, it's first, the first frame of the loop is frame number two, and the last frame of the loop is frame number 16. If we play it, now the right foot is, um, isn't doing that jerk, and it looks... This looks pretty good now. I'll bet the duck walk could be fixed by, by doing the same procedure. And I always think you should upload uh, animation files because some of the effects of animation files can't be seen in that, uh, that uh, upload uh, play mode. But the upload play mode does tell you if, uh, if the animation is right side up and forwards. And so it is uh, useful to be able to see that. So here's our animation. It looks good. That's the end of the lesson. The next lesson will be, ooh, actually changing some of the uh, these poses in a BVH file and making a an entirely new animation.